everybody, and welcome to Morning Coffee on the Radio Vision Network. I am Mark Cook. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on this fine Monday in September. It finally cooled off this morning. It's it starting to feel like fall. Yesterday was football. We're moving right along. The seasons are changing. We're evolving. Things are happening. It's 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 exciting. It's really exciting, and I'll tell you why. I'm excited because I am talking to the lead pastor at the Church of the Nazarene in Burlington. He is Brian Hannon, and he is joining me this morning on uh, Morning Coffee. Good morning, Byron. Good morning. And welcome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, and I'm doing great. And, and thanks for joining us this morning because I think we've got a really great message to share with everybody, and it's a great way to kick off a week and a Monday morning and all of that. So I'm excited to jump right into it. I'm excited as well. Glad to be here. Thank you. So let's talk about, let's do like the technical specifics first, okay. just to tell everybody where the church is mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff. I know you're in Burlington, but let's right. get down to the specifics. Well, we're located at 704 Sunset Road, um, which is a main drag that runs through Burlington all the way in through Willingboro. Okay. So most people are probably familiar with it, have been on it a number of times and may not even recognize that they've driven past the church. Right. So. Yeah, our, uh, if you're interested in our website, we're at www.burlnaz.org. Uh, you can find us that way. Our number is 609-387-4644. Uh, yeah, now, I, mean, I love that Burl Naz. It's such like a catchy website. Like, you would never expect, like, a church to have, like, a real catchy website name. And you guys did it. It, it just fits because, you know, the Church of the Nazarene is, is it's a unique name because a lot of, uh, churches don't use Nazarene right. in, in their title, but right. you know, I, I mentioned off the air that I, I look full disclosure, folks. I, I was a, a Catholic school kid growing up, but you know, I know the term Nazarene, but mm -hmm. a lot of people out there may not be familiar with it. Right. So, why don't you explain like why you chose that term for the church or why it was chosen and what it means, uh, you know, okay, for you? All right, well, first of all, the Church of the Nazarene is a denomination. It's probably certainly not as well known as some of the other denominations out there in, in the Protestant world, but it is a denomination. And the founders chose that word specifically because um, Jesus was raised in the town of Nazareth. Mm -hmm. Even though he was born in Bethlehem, he was raised in Nazareth, and he was known as a Nazarene. Now, Nazarenes at that time of Israel's history were generally considered second-class citizens. And so the founders of the church purposefully chose that name because they wanted to identify to the least of these among the citizens of the world. So they wanted, to, the founders wanted to minister to and focus their ministry on um, poor people, uh, people who have not experienced some of the advantages that others have had and to, and to, and to drive their ministry that way. So the name was, was chosen specifically for that reason that's really interesting so and i don't want to I, I don't want to say that it was almost like an insult but it was not necessarily the most favorable of terms at that time right well, like i would actually go as far as to say if you were called a nazarene in first century palestine it was an insult wow okay right. it, but it's a, it's like such, such a weird thing because the name comes out of a place mm -hmm. right it comes out of, of, of a town right. right the town of nazareth right. so to use that as like a uh, an insult mm -hmm. across a whole bunch of people is pretty it's it's a pretty heavy and a pretty powerful thing that was happening at that time right right absolutely and so to to use the term nazarene was almost a way to try to bridge that gap mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. and make the people feel a little bit more part of a community rather than constantly being it sounds like they were constantly being like pushed aside and pushed down you don't you're not worth you have no worth and all that stuff well yeah i think it's, and i think even more more marked to the point it was jesus was saying these are the people that i tend to associate with right these are the people that i prefer these are the people that i want to draw to me right the the, the low class the prostitutes the people who are classified as as sinners, those that the rest of society did not want to be bothered with, he was saying, I'm here for you. Right. And so the founders of the Church of the Nazarene back in 1908 when the denomination was founded, essentially were saying, that's what we want our church to be, and that's what we want our church to become, and that's what we want all of our local churches to have as a primary focus. Well, you want to help the people that need the help, mm -hmm. and that's, a, you know, it sounds like such a simple message, right? Like, of course we want to help the people that, that need the help. 
but it doesn't always work that way. No, it doesn't. And it's such a sad state of affairs that that it, it doesn't work that way, and it takes this specific denomination to kind of take on that challenge because it really is, it's quite an insurmountable task if you think about it, right? Because especially in, in our America today, we're dealing with a lot of people that need help. There are a lot of needs. Um, it goes without saying, even though obviously we're saying it, there are just tremendous amount of needs. We never run out of things to do. They never, we never run out of people that need to be ministered to, need to be loved, need to be cared for. So that's why we're there. That's what we want to do. That's and, what we're trying to do. And your community, it, it, that's, what, that's what the congregation is. It's all, about, it's all about helping each other and building each other up. And, and you know, I know that, that you know, as the lead pastor over there, you've encountered so many scenarios and situations and experiences where you have directly been able to affect families and individuals in the church. And without giving any real specific information, if you could just tell me some of those great stories that uh, of how you guys are helping, you know, your congregation. Well, there's there's a there's a couple of things I I, I can talk about. First of all, I, you know, maybe I I originally planned to to kind of work from a different direction, but I'll I'll start here. Um, we believe that it's very important that it's you're not only spiritually healthy, but that you're emotionally healthy. That the two go together that we can't have a healthy relationship with God unless we have a healthy view of ourselves mm -hmm. and we have healthy relationships with other people. You know, God says that he, the greatest commandment is to love him and to love our neighbors as ourselves. They work together. It's not one or the other. So we've devoted a lot of time in our congregation at focusing on both our spiritual health and our emotional health. Um, there's a, there's a, an author by the name of Peter Skizera who wrote a book, several books in fact, but the latest one, is called Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. And we've spent a lot of time just dealing with those kinds of issues about how to grieve, the fact that everybody grieves, the fact that everybody has hurts, that everybody has disappointments, that everybody has boundaries or needs to, mm -hmm. that everybody has limits that they need to learn how to work within. And when we don't operate according to that, that kind of dynamic, then we tend to run into emotional problems. And so we spent a lot of time working in our church Around, around that, but then what we want to do is then take that message and say, we've benefited from that, how can we help others, whether you're a part of our congregation right. or not. So we may ha it may be as simple as someone calling our church who doesn't attend, who asks us to pray for them, okay? It, it may it be, be an simple as an intention, right. please, right. just think of me, it, right? It, and it, exactly, it could be how do we partner with other organizations. So for example, one of the things that we do is we, we, we periodically partner with the Jewish Relief Agency that provides food to hungry people in South Jersey and in North Philadelphia. Awesome. Actually, all of Philadelphia. I, I shouldn't limit it to, right. to North Philadelphia. Um, and I actually had a situation on Valentine's Day where we were delivering food. You know, on this particular Sunday, we weren't having a, a normal church service. We were delivering food with Jewish Relief Agency, packing food and delivering it to homes. And I went into this one woman's home and I knocked on her door and she came to her door and she says, I'm so glad you're here. I've been waiting for this food. Now, I believe, don't know for certain that this was a Jewish woman, but she says, I need, I was waiting on this food. I'm so glad you're here. And she invited me in and I, I, she asked me to put the food in the kitchen and she said, are you married? And I said, yes, ma'am, it was an older lady. And she says, well, your wife won't mind. Today, you're my valentine because you bought this food to me. Wow, that's powerful. And, and, and your heart has to be so full at that time. Absolutely. Full of so much emotion because you're, it's breaking in, in some way that this woman is so reliant and so, uh, you know, she needs the food so badly. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's so full on the other side because you get to be able to help that situation and really be a part of the solution, mm -hmm. which, which is such a, a really rewarding feeling that that I, if if people don't know what it's like to volunteer and to help others, it is the most rewarding feeling for yourself. You're not only doing such great work for others, is that it can make you feel good too and that's like the selfish reason of it right? right and you don't have to make a big deal about that and how great it makes you feel and all of that but it, it, it's a byproduct of serving your community right absolutely and serving your fellow man because 
because that's what it's all about and that's the message that has gotten lost here kind of over the years as we've we've gotten more aggressively towards our own personal goals rather than our goals as as a collective and Byron, this is awesome, but we've got so much more to talk about, but i got to take a break. This is what happens, right? We talk about so much great stuff. I run over these breaks. My producers, they'll go crazy. Yeah. They make all these break signs, but uh, we got to take a quick one. Okay. We'll come right back here on Morning Coffee, and we'll talk more to lead pastor from the Church of the Nazarene in Burlington. His name is Byron Hannon, and we'll be right back here on Morning Coffee on the Radio Vision Network. Sub some sizzle. This is the way. The way it's always been. The way it always should be. The way it always will be. Because that's just the way it's supposed to be. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Simply Gents, located in Marlton, New Jersey, takes care of all your grooming needs, including haircuts, straight razor shaves, massages, facial, manicures, pedicures, and waxing. To find more information or book an appointment, visit us online at www.simplygents.com. The secret weapon of a well-groomed man, Simply Gents. If you haven't been to Speed Raceway, what are you waiting for? You want to live fast? You want to make every second count? Then grab the family. Round up the guys. Speed Raceway is 100,000 square feet of excitement, whether you're a kid or a kid at heart. Speed Raceway is the place for endless fun all summer long. Log on to SpeedRaceway.com or just get here now. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to make a really great sub, this is what we do. It's what we've been doing. It's what we've always done. It's what we'll always do. So what are you doing? Jersey Mike's, be a sub above. Today's show was brought to you by Alicia Kelly of Whitehorse RV Center in Williamstown, New Jersey. Alicia is your RV expert. Contact Alicia at alicia at whitehorserv.com or give her a call at 856-262-1717, extension 203. When you think of RV, think Alicia Kelly. Today's show has been sponsored by Farmers Insurance in Voorhees, New Jersey. To protect your assets and the people you love, call Mike Skoranek, your local Farmers Insurance agent, at 856-336-2553. We are farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. Welcome back to Morning Coffee. I am Mark Cook. We are here on the Radio Vision Network, and we are continuing our conversation from the lead pastor from the Church of Nazarene. His name is Byron Hannon. And we are on the Radio Vision Network. I am Mark Cook. This is Morning Coffee. And we are moving right along on this Monday morning as we talk to Pastor Brian ha Byron. I do, have I said Brian like a, that, that's okay. I, I answer to both because a lot of people make that mistake. It's not a problem. It's Byron. Though. I feel like I've said Byron a whole bunch of times, yeah. but I've also said Brian a bunch you, of times you, you have, too. But hey, I work in the grace field, so it's yeah. okay. So you ha you kind of have to forgive me, which is cool. <laughs> like I, most of my guests don't have to forgive me, but you do. I so do. this is I cool. Yeah. I will I will handle that responsibility with with care. Trust me. Okay. I will be uh, I will be reckless with it, but you know, uh, Byron, right. we've got a picture of the church up right now because okay. we wanted to show everybody what we're what the church actually looks like. So I was thinking maybe 
you could tell me a little bit about the history uh, of maybe the building and then the church it itself, if it's always been kind of under your care and all okay. that, just okay. a little bit about it. Okay, well, the church was actually uh, started in 1959 out of a home in Willingboro. Um, the current structure is actually two pieces. Um, the older structure was uh, built um, on Sunset Road in Burlington in 1965. It was completed in 1965. And the balance of the structure, which is the, 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 the circular kind of sanctuary and, and right. additional classrooms were uh, finished in 1982. Okay. Uh, so no, no new additions um, uh, since then. Yeah, but that was a 20-year evolution almost, yeah. it sounds like, from when they had the building set to when they kind of finalized everything. So that definitely was quite, quite a process. A lot of, uh, quite a process. Um, in fact, most of the, on the new structure, the newer structure, I should say, the, most of the work was done by people in the church. We only had to, we brought in contractors to do the, the heavy block work, but right. both men and women in the church did the vast majority of the work um, from soup to nuts. That's great. That's yeah. really, really a, a, an interesting dynamic. And what, what kind of is, is you, you know, unique? What, it, what am I going to feel when I come through the doors? Uh, you know, is it, I imagine it's a very uh, calming, peaceful influence, but, you know, every church has their own little, differences and nuances. So everybody, has, everybody has their own vibe. Um, I think what you'll find is a very relaxed atmosphere. Um, you know, if you come, I'll probably be dressed like this and when I, when, I, when I stand to give the morning message, most of our folks come very casual, but we don't, we don't tell people how they should dress as long as they come with something that's appropriate, that's not right. outrageous, but, um, but more than that, you'll, you'll find a very friendly, welcoming environment. You'll find people um, of all ethnic and racial backgrounds, uh, you'll find all age groups, um, and, uh, and I think most people uh, walk away feeling like, "Well, oh, those are some nice people." And, yeah. And and we we don't do that or, or try to manufacture that. You know, some folks try to create an environment of being nice, but um, we want it to legitimately, to be genuinely, genuinely we nice. We want it to be authentic, and so I think that that re reflects the character of our church. Well, let me let me really just kind of break it down. Is that it sounds like. You want people to be comfortable. You want them to come in and be very comfortable with where they are, who they are, and their relationships with God. Right. This is a pretty, I, again, I don't want to, I'm not trying to downplay it, but it's a very simple message. It really is a message of welcome and of love and of just come in and see what we're all about because there's so many times, and look, I've been to them. I've been to these churches where they care about what you wear, right. and they care about that the, the things that you're talking about right. that intimidate people mm -hmm. to make them not want to be a part of the church, mm -hmm. that it's too whatever for right. them, that it's not the positive experience that it's supposed to be. Right. Religion and church is supposed to fulfill you. It's not supposed to make you feel bad all of the time well i'm sure if you if you come to our place and stay long enough you'll find our warts we got them we're like everybody else we're humans right but that won't be one of them right you won't feel unwelcome right you won't feel unloved and, and one of the things i wanted to say we didn't get the opportunity we were talking in the previous segment and i wanted to say this that that love is not an emotion love is an action it is it is a consequence of recognizing what people need and responding to it that's love anything else it's it's just airy fairy and we don't really want to be about that um, those feelings are nice but feelings ebb and flow they go but we want people to walk away feeling like their lives have been impacted even if it's just for a few minutes but hopefully longer right that it's real yeah. that it's not a superficial we're just telling you this because it sounds nice right. that it's an actual reality and what I think is really, really interesting and really cool is that I think that, and this is important for, for everybody out there, that when you come to the Church of the Nazarene in Burlington, I can come directly to you Absolutely. and talk right to you. And if I have any questions about the church or about anything, about really, about life, about anything, I can come directly. I can shake your hand. I can be face to face. I can look you in the eyes and I can ask you anything that's on my mind and that is a really special thing and people need to understand and take advantage of that well and i, I in fact um, it's interesting you say that mark because at the end of every service i generally will say 
If anybody wants to talk to me about anything, I will remain up here for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people come, sometimes they don't. Right. But I want people to feel like, I never want people to feel like I'm not approachable. Yeah. Um, because what's the point? Right, right. <laughs> what's the point if I'm not approachable? Right. Um, and so, um, so I, you know, I like your point. I like the way you frame it. Um, I wish I could have said it that way. Yeah, no. But it's... Th that said, um, you know, people, people are always free to come whether it's beginning, middle, or end. In fact, we actually try to construct our services so that there is an opportunity for people to participate in our services as opposed to just us standing up in front and being talking heads. Yeah, well, and that's another big complaint that people have is that they're, 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 they're trying to worship and, and their services and they feel like it's just this one way. Right. It's one way down and, it, and, and your dynamic is, is, is kind of, it's different. It's more... It's more of a community-based service. It's it, it's everyone involved together. It's it's really a it's really a cool thing. And I'm just going by what you've described. Well, we, we want it to be. In fact, I mean, interesting given the, the background that you shared with the audience. Um, community and communion have the same root word. Mm -hmm. They are the same. Yep. Um, and so you can't effectively have communion without community. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't Look work. at that. Look at that. Right. And and just to go back real quick, um, you know, look, you know, through my life again, I was raised in in a, in a Catholic environment. Um, through my life, you know, when I wanted to, to speak to someone, and if I had questions of one of the leaders of my church, I had to go into a real setting, right? A very intimidating type setting, mm -hmm. and it whether it was an office or a confessional or something else, it was it was really. It was a lot. When you're a little kid, it's even more. It's even more intimidating. And and what you've created is a dynamic of breaking down all of those barriers and those walls and that that discomfort that I could just come and speak to a well-educated man and and be comfortable with the issues and the problems that I'm having because I know that I'm not going to be judged when I come to speak to the lead pastor at the Church of the Nazarene in Burlington, Byron Hammond. Well, uh, hopefully you would not feel that way, and, and certainly I can't take credit for breaking those. It was actually begun under predecessors of mine, predecessor pastors of mine who created a culture that I'm just trying to trying to continue and build upon. Yeah, but that's a really sp it's a really special thing, is that, look, you may not be the one that has started the mission, but the mission is one that's pure and good. Yeah. So it's very awesome that you want to continue that mission right because we need people to continue to spread love and base actions out of love and positivity for our fellow man because again we live I feel like in a situation where these words are so important well, maybe they, now more than ever they're they're absolutely critical and and, and obviously you know the church the church worldwide has taken lots of hits mm -hmm. Um, some of them, my opinion, um, deserved. Um, but at the same time, there are many, many, many good churches out there with many good people who are legitimately and authentically trying to do a good work for, for the sake of their God. Yeah, and, and I think it's amazing because there are a few people out there watching us right now, listening to our voice, that may be interested in coming to check you out. Mm -hmm. I mean, look. You're in South Jersey, right? You've been looking for some something. You, you're not even sure probably what you're looking for, but there's some sort of missing feeling. And I think that whether, again, it doesn't matter what you've, what you denomination you feel that you've been associated with before in the past or what you feel like you are, come to the Church of the Nazarene. You're welcome. Come as you are. Come as you are. And, and, and Byron, I told you this was, was going to happen, right? right? I'm going to have you look in the camera three, sure. and I want you to make that plea, make that that uh, that 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 invitation to, to everyone to come and, and meet you and, and check the church out. So there you are, sir. Camera three is all yours. Okay. Well, there is a an old old hymn, and we don't sing sing a lot of hymns in our church, but occasionally we do. And I'll break one out just just for right now. There's an old hymn that says, "Just as I am," and it talks about coming to the Lord just as you are, not having to do anything special or, or become something that you're not. And so I want you to know that, that that same invitation is available to you at our church. We're a small church, 
but we do big things and we believe in big things and we believe in a big God. We're located at 704 Sunset Road uh, in Burlington, New Jersey, um, right next to Casamari Restaurant, if, if you know where that's at, right across from Sunset Ridge, um, where our service time is at 11 a.m. on Sunday. We have prayer on every alternate Tuesdays uh, at 7 p.m. On, uh, 7 p.m. on Tuesday evenings. Feel free to come. Look forward to seeing you. If you do, uh, come and let me know that you saw us on the show, and uh, I'll be happy to greet you. That's awesome. He is the lead pastor over at the Church of Nazarene in Burlington. He is Byron Hannon. I got it right that time. I had to get it right that last time. I want to thank you so much for coming in today. This was really, really cool. I hope that uh, I hope you enjoyed it. First of all, I did. I did. And I hope that you know maybe we can get that message out there that. You know, religion doesn't have to be exactly what you think or thought it was before. It can just be a place that you feel fulfilled in your heart. Yep. And we operate every day out of love, kind right. of the way we're supposed to. Mm -hmm. So make sure you go check out burlnaz.org. It's B U R L N A Z dot org. That's right. And uh, head on over to the church and, and meet Pastor uh, Byron Hannon. Mark. A pleasure. Thanks so pleasure. much for coming on. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. You're quite welcome. I got to take another question. Quick pick here on Morning Coffee, but stick around. We got so much more coming up here on the Radio Vision Network. Today's show is sponsored by Hardgrove Demolition, your demolition experts. Hardgrove is a family owned and operated business right here in the southern New Jersey area, bringing you 45 years of demolition expertise. Hardgrove has all your demolition needs from emergency demolition service to demolition equipment rental. Hargrove is one of the state-approved recycling facilities right here in the southern New Jersey area. No job is too big or too small for Hargrove Demolition. Contact them today at one of their three locations. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to give a sub some sizzle, this is the way. The way it's always been. The way it always should be. The way it always will be. Because that's just the way it's supposed to be. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. If you haven't been to Speed Raceway, what are you waiting for? You want to live fast? You want to make every second count? Then grab the family. Round up the guys. Speed Raceway is 100,000 square feet of excitement, whether you're a kid or a kid at heart. Speed Raceway is the place for endless fun all summer long. Log on to SpeedRaceway.com or just get here now. When we make Beyond Natural Dry Dog and Cat Foods, we start with real meat as the first ingredient. We leave out corn, wheat, and soy. And we own where our dry food is made. 100%. Can other brands say all that? For nutrition you can trust and your pet will enjoy. Does your food go beyond? Learn more at PurinaBeyond.com. Extra Innings is the nation's premier indoor baseball and softball training center featuring indoor batting cages, seven multi-use tunnels, and